So the fellow leaned over. I done looked at him. He had nice, clear blue eyes. He just looked too sharp. I said, he's DEA or FBI or CIA or something. Really? That big fella sitting there. He looked like Rex Tillerson. Where did you guys take off from again? San Pedro Sula, Honduras. San Pedro Sula, okay. It's over on the Caribbean side. Okay. Death capital of the world for some years. The what? The death capital. The murder, death, ca- murder, capital? Murder, murder capital of the world for a good number of years late, just some years back. But at that time, it was laid back and wonderful, but a nice halfway stop coming up. So when I said that, he leaned over and said, you fly these things? I said, I got a few hours, mister. My name Barry Seal. How you doing? And so then he got to talking to me, and we talked to airplanes and so forth. He said, I just got out of prison this morning in Honduras. I got caught down here. I didn't believe him one bit. <laughs> and he said that he had been a Transworld Airline uh, captain, and that it was, I don't believe he told me it was XCIA, but. Commercial? Yeah, he was flew 747s. I believe he was the youngest 747 pilot that the TWA ever had. And he took a load of explosives down to the uh, Cuban Contras and got caught with a DC-6 loaded with 10 tons of explosives, and he lost his job with a TWA. Wow. So then he's working, doing whatever he can, like this freelance, and he got in trouble. Mm-hmm. So I didn't believe him a bit. But we chatted about airplanes all the way on to New Orleans. He straight up just told you this on the airplane. Then I just got out of prison this morning, you know. Flying like, explosives to, well, to the no, contrast. That, that was before. I believe he got, he, had, he got caught with 100 kilos in a little piper okay. down there, and he served a year. Okay. But I didn't believe it a bit. I thought he was just trying to pull me out. So when we landed in New Orleans, I... Shook hands with him, a nice fellow, and got out there, and here's 20 or 30 people, women and children, hanging on him, crying, begging, hugging his neck, and I thought, that guy's telling the truth. <laughs> Ain't no way he can stage that. <laughs> wow. So uh, I went over to him, and I had Mari to write our name and address and the phone number on it, and I said, Barry, I might have some work for you if you're interested. Come out and see me in Santa Barbara. All right, I'll do it. So a week or two later, he comes out, and I had a... Didn't learn his lesson, huh? Well, he was ready to make some money. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I said, I can, I can, I'm hauling cocaine out of Columbia, and would you be interested? He said, oh, yeah, well, let's, let's see what you can do with flying. I didn't know what kind of pilot, people, all kind of pilots. See, people get the license, still can't fly. I don't right. know. <laughs> so I had a... What was your biggest concern with him when uh, he came out to meet you in Santa Barbara and you were... Talking to and you were, you were talking about hiring him. What what were you worried? Were you worried about anything like, like obviously his flying skills or like were you? Did you have any sort of suspicion that he could have been CIA or undercover or anything? Or not after that? Not after not, seeing not his after families, family. and I found out he was already in prison. All that sort of right. stuff. It just okay. they don't do that. To okay. that. It just it, I was comfortable with him. Okay. I really liked Barry. He was mm-hmm. my friend. We you know, he seated off with some people. All right, we were just like uh, you guys got along great. We got along good. Really, I liked him. And uh, so I had a 690 Aero Turbojet Aero Commander. That thing was nearly new. What's it called again? Uh, uh, Aero Commander, a 690. That's uh, 6690. That 690B. B, Aero uh, Commander. Yeah, and it, was, it, had, it had little jet engines that turned propellers. That thing was fast. It'd go to 300 or something miles an hour, and it'd go right on up there, right with the jets for a while. Anyhow, he got in that thing, and I said, show me what you got. And he said, show enough? I said, yeah. And it wasn't but a little while. I said, you don't have to show me no more. He was like Bob Hoover. He just did the, I mean, he was aerobatic, like the Blue really? Angels. Oh, yeah. I fly all right. Mm-hmm. But that guy was like the Blue Angels. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> like a God. And then he cut the engine and he just let it fly sideways to sideways t- till it comes, hits the ground. Irk. The only person I've ever seen that is in this air show with Bob Hoover, the world champion. So he was that good. He was good. He had a thousand parachute jumps. And in that movie they made about America made about him, it was so wrong. He was such a gentleman. They had him coming out of whorehouses and women hanging all over him. And yeah. that was just, I never heard him say damn. He didn't really? smoke. He didn't drink. He didn't do drugs. He was a businessman. He was yeah. a pilot yeah. and a gentleman. So after you were so impressed with his acrobatics and his flying skills, then what'd you do? I said, uh, Barry, the, I got a, this plane needs tanking. You know somebody? He said, yep. Needs I what? Some, need tanking. I need, it won't go the range. Oh. And needs tanks in it. So he said, yeah, I got a mechanic in uh, Mena, Arkansas. It keeps his mouth shut. And so I gave him $10,000 and he flew away in my new airplane. 
<laughs> a few days later, he, he called and said, come to my house. I went to his house, and it was all tanked up. Wow. And that's when I told him, you know, I've been stopping at, uh, I'll hire you to fly, and mm -hmm. I'll give you $2,000 a kilo. I was getting five. And so he was happy with it. And I said, but now we don't need this plane tanked. Well, first off, we did a few loads, and he would fly down and meet me in Belize at a ranch I had near Orange Walk. And we would change the load over. But then it got dangerous. I figured, you know, we got $15, $20 million worth of cocaine changing planes here. And I would go into Jamaica uh, because I didn't mind flying out of flying that southern end. But I was scared to cross the U.S. border. Mm. Well, not scared, but I'd rather not if I hire it done. <clears throat> so, uh, but then I told him, well, you, we can refuel in, in the military base in Nicaragua. Well, he just couldn't believe it. So that that's the only time I really ever impressed him. I said, yeah, you can come out of Bolivia, out of Columbia, anywhere. Mm -hmm. And they had that military base, no words. Just come right in. They'll fuel you up, give you a steak and eggs, and polish your airplane, you'll be on your way. Really? Yeah. So Barry flew. And I mean, he would fly. But he wouldn't fly another until I paid him. It was, so he did 500 kilos at the load. And so it was a million dollars he made. And uh, A so, million dollars for one flight. Right. And uh, he hired this guy, Emil Camp. I had to give the $20,000 for him to go down, get Emil out of the Honduranian jail. And Emil wasn't much of a pilot. Oh, no. he could fly, but he wasn't. he just get him around. Right. So uh, the two of them flew together. They were great big fellas. I said, goodness gracious. Two of y'all, you can put 400 kilos in there where y'all sit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he wouldn't fly without it. So uh, you might like this little story. He, uh, he would moan and groan until I paid him. Well, I didn't get paid until they got paid, and so I had a pipeline coming. And uh, sometimes they'd owe me six or seven million dollars. It'd take three or four weeks to for them to get money, and then I'd get get what they did. So I was paying him before I got paid. So I was like a loss. I'm I'm back. Uh, right, I'm you're really, front. You're uh, fronting that money. Exactly. Front, yeah. So uh, he wanted. Uh, so you I, were you were paying Barry. Uh huh. How much would you pay him on one trip? Uh, uh, two thousand dollars kilo. I paid a million dollars a trip. So you'd give Barry a million dollars cash. Uh -huh. Yes. He would fly where? He would fly. We'd we'd he'd fly out of um, where he wanted to up in Arkansas or Louisiana, and he would come over to a little radio but station. But like, where would he go? Where would he fly? Like to he'd fly to Columbia. Yeah. But okay. he, but we didn't know where we were going a lot of the times. Oh. We would uh, we would come over El Banco. It's at the forks of the Magdalena River there in. Uh, behind Baron mm -hmm. and there's a radio station. I believe it's still 7.20 a.m. on your dial. Uh -huh. And we come at 10,000 feet in a circle, and pretty soon there'd be a plane. You'd see it. It might be already there. It'd be like usually a Cessna 180. Mm -hmm. And he'd be circling, and you'd get right behind him, and you'd wiggle your wings. And you might go 100, 200 miles, and you'd get land in the jungle. Oh, and, and they would tell you where to land. They wouldn't say a word. We didn't speak. We just followed that you other just followed the plane. Or followed him where we go. And there was a signal they would do with the with the wings. Well, we just knew it was him. It just, yeah. Okay. And uh, so followed that plane. Did that sometimes. Sometimes we'd go to the same place. But if there was a new place, we'd follow that plane. Okay. That was pretty neat. And then uh, he'd come back, stop at uh, Nicaragua, refuel, and come all the way on. He'd go to, and he went to Mena. And this is uh, what... Uh, so, so he had the million dollars in cash. Yeah, I'd give him a million dollars every and what, week. And what would he do with that million once he landed there? I don't know. So that was just his. That wasn't for his cost to buy the cocaine or anything. No, we just, I got paid $5,000 a kilo. So I got paid two and a half million dollars and I gave him one million. Okay, but so wouldn't I, they have to give him the, all of the cash though? No, they didn't give him anything. Okay, okay. He just give, he, all right, he would land in Mena, Arkansas. Okay. And then he would put it in three different cars. Okay. And, and, and every day, I, I had a fella buying me six cars a week, great big ones. So he was, okay, okay, I, I, that was where I was confused. I, he none just, of the transaction revenue is going through the pilot at all. The pilot no, is just the delivery straight, person. He's a truck driver. Okay, got it. So, but anyway, he would, I had, he had the drivers. I didn't even want to meet his drivers. That's how, I was afraid to meet people. Right. They get caught, they're going to tell on you, exactly. which you all did. So Exactly. Uh, I had somebody buying cars, and they buy these LTDs or the Ford uh, for the Mercury Marquis, mm -hmm. and they had big trunks. We put air shocks on tires that wouldn't go flat. New hoses, boom, boom. And then I gave those to the Colombians, and they they would be a trunk full of cocaine and duffel bags. They'd mm -hmm. have rattlesnakes on it. Some of them would have cow horns. That meant 
this one went to this one, that one went to that one. Oh, wow. So uh, I had to just point the cars out to my friend Lito and give him the key. Bam. And I never want to see that car again. I said, it's going to your safe house. I don't want it back. Right. And it's $5,000 to you, buddy. And oh, I said, well, you can take it to New York, Canada, where you want to. It's, it's as good as you can do. So they liked it after a while. Wow. So anyway, one time, Barry was belly aching a little bit about might be being slow on pace. So I was in the store and I saw these Stay Free mini pads. A pretty package. Stay Free mini pads? Time packs. Oh, <laughs> tampons. <laughs> tampons, yeah. <laughs> Australia tampons. And uh, so I, I got a million dollars and put it in a box, and I put those tampons on top of it, stay free, and wrap that thing up and put a bow on it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Barry loved it. He made a place on his mantelpiece for those for the stay frees. That's amazing. Yeah. That is absolutely amazing. So how long did your and Barry's relationship last? About two years. Two a years. A year and a half, two years, uh-huh. And what, when did it go south? What happened when it went south? Well, I got arrested in August 1982. Okay. So that, that was the end of it.